Hello and welcome everybody. We are super excited. This is our day two in Europe. We landed yesterday and it was uh, quite a hectic day uh, with a lot of stuff. I believe you all have already watched our previous video on the first episode. Um, today we are going to visit uh, a village called Geethorn. Um, uh, it's 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 a very 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 pretty, cute, quaint, beautiful village. Uh, it's just like out of a picture. So uh, let's see how it's going to be. Um, it takes about two and a half hours to reach the place from Amsterdam if uh, you were taking the train or the bus. Uh, but I always wanted to uh, try my hands on uh, the European roads. So today we are going to take a rental car and uh, it's going to save us hopefully about one hour on each side. Um, so, uh, but uh, the, the entire experience of the car rental was not very pleasant at all. I booked it uh, through 60. Um, just to let you know, I wanted to share one experience with you all. Um, the 60 shop is the office rather I'm sorry is uh, is at the central station itself um, of course the cars are uh, most expensive if you're taking from that particular store um, they have uh, three or four other outlets inside the dam uh, they are less expensive than this one uh, but it's um, uh, it, it's quite difficult to reach those spots so this was like en route um, every time we go to any place uh, in and around Amsterdam, we will have to go via Amsterdam Central. So that's why, and uh, since I was taking it only for one single day, I chose this to be the pickup point. Um, once we reached there, I was told uh, that there was another gentleman right in front of me, and uh, 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 he was there uh, right ahead of me waiting for his turn for a long time and uh, then there was a little bit of argument between uh, the 60 official and the gentleman. Mm -hmm. Turns out that uh, he arrived like uh, three or four hours late and uh, they just couldn't uh, do anything at all. They already cancelled the booking without informing him and uh, that particular car was already given to somebody else. He had booked uh, for a set of four days but they just didn't refund anything at all and uh, so I asked her uh, what is the procedure for you to inform the customers because I didn't get any kind of information at all no SMS no email nothing and uh, conveniently she said that uh, your email ID was not available I was like stunned uh, in today's world without an email ID one cannot fill a form at all so how is it possible that they do not have so Turns out that it's an aggregator service, so I uh, bought it from a car rental aggregator app which didn't pass on the complete information to 60. Apparently this is what I was told. Um, uh, so, and and uh, fortunately I was just late by one hour, else uh, they would have done the same with me. Um, so after uh, doing a little bit of deliberation with her, I don't know whether it was because of that or not, but she kind of upgraded uh, my car. Uh, now I was about to drive a German car for the first time so I wasn't even aware that um, what that upgrade really meant to me so it was like from X3 to X5 or something like that the BMW to Audi uh, or whatnot um, so I felt that it could uh, just because the 3 became 5 my common sense said uh, it would be a bigger car but uh, when we reached the parking lot, which is another story in itself, um, I found the car was a sports car. It's even smaller than what uh, I had booked originally. Uh, nevertheless, I mean, the driving experience uh, has been immensely out of the world. Um, no complaints out there at all. Um, so after picking up the, uh, the card, uh, the access card, uh, and the direction from the parking lot, uh, I was asked to walk about one and a half kilometers down the down the road, um, cross the underpass, and uh, walk the entire length of the canal, and uh, reach another spot. Um,
which has a basement parking. So when I reached there, um, I I couldn't find anybody, and of course, I mean, it's uh, uh, it's everything is kind of automated. So um, from from our Indian mentality, we would hail anybody, we would tap a shoulder, and we would ask, right, if if you were in doubt, and we are always in doubt. Um, so uh, there, unfortunately, I couldn't find anybody. I asked my wife and daughter to just uh, uh, sit under the tree, and they were happily doing so. When I went downstairs, I took an ele uh, uh, an elevator down to the subway. Um, there were like a couple of other people there, so I asked one man, and he said that he's from Denmark, and he was also equally lost like me. Um, and there were like thousands and thousands and thousands of cars from uh, from tens and twenties of different car rental companies, um, except for a 60. So then I came back up. Um, and uh, then I met a very, very general gen gentleman uh, from, uh, I, I think the hotel was Hilton or something like that. It was a, it was a five-star hotel um, and uh, he actually came out all the way and he um, showed me how to reach the other spot. He said that either you go back to the subway, um, I mean to, to, the, uh, to the basement and then uh, walk the entire length of the canal or uh, you walk um, uh, from outside I and mean, that is better that is going to be more convenient for you um, so we felt uh, that could be an easier way and this time we were uh, right at the right spot um, and um, the the very sight of our car actually melted me down uh, by now I was huffing puffing and uh, totally annoyed uh, because we have already lost like one one and a half hours of um, other than the one hour that I lost because of my own laziness so total like two two and a half hours gone um, and uh, time is ticking right I mean even uh, even the boat that we have hired in Ethorn uh, that was also like kind of booked for two hours um, so every minute we lose uh, there is a kind of a penalty right a fine that we need to pay and uh, uh, so but yeah I mean eventually we were able to uh, uh, we were able to drive away and now we are driving towards Githorn.
so here we are at uh, Githorn. Um, this is the place. Um, now, after taking this turn, I suddenly realized that this may not be the right spot. I had uh, put on Google Map uh, Githorn car parking. Apparently, that's not the right spot. So once we uh, reached this place, um, I didn't find anybody to ask and um, uh, finally we found one very old senior citizen couple uh, both of them were very cute and uh, unfortunately they didn't understand english so i had to explain uh, what a boat is in a very animated way and uh, they showed us the way uh, back to the right spot now here we are driving on this main road which is along this big canal on the right now this big canal has a very very exciting and thrilling story which was quite scary for us uh, at that uh, moment when we were going through that particular journey. Uh, we will tell uh, you all about that story a little later. Um, so here we are, we are taking a U-turn and uh, finally we found mm -hmm. the right spot um, where the, the origin of the boat is supposed to be. Um, the directions are pretty much given on an email which came with a pin code um, now once we reach that spot uh, it was uh, once again uh, it was totally automated there was nobody out there uh, to ask a question and uh, we were totally on our own so the property from the rear seat uh, kept on reading the instruction uh, the, the printout and um, uh, we were like completely engrossed in it but finally we found this spot we were able to park the car there stuck near the ground so we have a rescue rescue person After a little bit of uh, crash course and a lot of embarrassing moments, I graduated and uh, 
and now I'm successfully sailing through the small canals of the village of Keithorn. So that is the thing we can go any direction. Erika, can you see the sky? Are you able to see the front? Can I have a side of the bush? Can I have a side of the bush? Can I have a side of the bush? I can't do it lazy.
see this guy up also wow Ada. she has a gopro near he Breakfast and all that. 
you get everything oi mapping ki kono khabar te pare chai na ma basha ki purbe Over at a restaurant complex. So everybody is passing by. You can see there is a small house there with such a lovely garden. And then this is a restaurant complex where you get to park. So we have found our boat. So after the ice cream pit stop, um, I suddenly thought of uh, going back, and I didn't know that this was a one-way uh, river or or a canal route. Um, I kept on trying to take a U-turn. Uh, it was really getting very difficult, and I was uh, banging against the the bamboo uh, sides, and I was banging against uh, all the um, um uh, incoming boats um and then suddenly somebody from uh, from the shores told me uh, this is one way and uh, you will have to keep going straight so i just uh, followed uh, the trail and uh, we all were kind of heading in the same way there were like few uh, trenches here or there uh, like uh, mini tributaries that were connecting this this particular channel um but uh, uh now i was really getting impatient and we had to go back um that is when we thought of asking somebody uh about uh how to go back to our boat company's uh station um every boat company has a different color so ours was blue and uh, i didn't find any boat uh, with the same color and uh, by the way this very little route is going to take you to the big lake which i wanted to avoid i am really scared of water and uh, these channels were very shallow i mean they were only 2 uh, feet uh, deep and 4 uh, feet wide so it was not a problem at all um, to ride the boat here but uh, i didn't want to go all the way to the big lake with this boat um for locals and europeans uh, and westerners it's quite okay because um they know swimming i i too know swimming but i'm not at all confident about it and uh, they are uh, pretty skilled uh, when it comes to boating um kayaking um yachting and, and and so on and so forth but this is just a hobby for me and uh, this uh, I, i was trying this for the first time so definitely i didn't want to take a risk take the chance i found it um uh, uh quite worthwhile to return by now and uh, this is uh 
one of the last happy shots before uh, we stop at a place which is right across up on the left we found a few other boats that were also blue in color when I asked that person uh, how to go back he said that okay this is not our company's boat but this is what you can do you can uh, you can you can uh, ride the boat down this channel you were on the right track um, so you will basically have to take a u-turn but not house. here you will have to hit the big canal and from the big canal you'll have to take the second left and then it's going to take you back to where you started now the big canal is is actually very big when we reached the big canal uh, the big canal was very deep they were like very very deep boats it's like four times of this one so this particular canal is bigger than the uh, than the previous canal so they have like three or four categories of canals so the canal where we started our boating, uh, say for example it's like level 1 and this is uh, level 2 canal which is broader and deeper and then there is there is the larger channel uh, which they call it, uh, which they call the big canal and uh, that particular big canal is like meant for very very big boats and all the boats were um, motor boats and these are like very big and fast boats and our boat our this small little tiny boat uh, started to shake and wiggle um, uh, crazily uh, you can see this uh, uh, incoming boat right yeah uh, okay so so yeah this particular ripple of the water was rocking our boat so our boat was like very small and uh, Every uh, with with every passing of uh, of a of a big boat, we were like rocking, and uh, we were dead scared. We were actually dead scared, and uh, then we thought, let's stop somewhere and uh, take help. But unfortunately, there was nobody to give us help. Um, on one side of uh, of the canal, there were people um, uh, on the deck chairs. Um, sipping beer and uh, there was actually not a single spot to anchor the boat so what we did we came back to the left side of the big canal and we uh, anchored our boat and it was really difficult to anchor the boat because the canal had very high level of current um, after that we were kind of discussing amongst ourselves by them by now we were like completely scared and exhausted and um, and and my ice cream kind of melted away all right so so together uh, unanimously we kind of decided that uh, uh, let us stick together and let's take the boat let's follow the direction and uh, let's take the boat to uh, the the spot from which we took it because otherwise we don't know if this is a this is a foreign land right so if we are not returning the boat boat back to where it belongs uh, there could be a fine or, or, or some kind of uh, complaints against me so I didn't want to take the chance so um, with the bated breath uh, we kind of took the uh, advice and started uh, driving the boat again so we were back on the big canal and now uh, we could see that uh, uh, you know it, it just took about uh, less than three minutes for us to take the left turn um, under one small little bridge we, which we could have missed very easily had we not taken somebody's advice and uh, once we were back to the uh, back to the mini uh, canal we were able to come back uh, to the uh, starting point very easily and uh, unfortunately we were so busy in negotiating with the situation in the big canal we do not have any videos of that Unfortunately, the seat was so low that my four and a half feet uh, petted wife couldn't drive it at all. So all she could do was take a photo off and do some poses against the car.